I'm Marty Stauffer. To many people, caves are not the most appealing places to meet up with wild creatures. But ever since I was a kid in Arkansas, I've been fascinated with the mystery of these places. For primitive man, a cave was the most permanent and convenient form of shelter, although he may often have shared it with not so convenient wild guests. For many mammals, from bats to bears, a dark, dry cave is the ultimate in comfort and security, either as a temporary refuge or as a den in which to raise young. And for cold-blooded creatures, especially snakes, the constant underground temperature of a cave is essential for winter survival. It's common for snakes to gather by the dozens, hundreds, or even thousands in communal hibernation dens. What is not common is for a human to observe certain behavior that occurs under these conditions, which is why I came to this cave in Oklahoma to see Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. Join me as we witness one of the most hypnotic, rarely seen events of the reptile world, the combat ritual of a snake dance. This cave, outside Mangum, Oklahoma, is well known for its large population of rattlesnakes. Each October, the snakes return to this same denning site to hibernate. By April, their fat reserves are depleted, and the urge to find food forces them to leave the refuge of the cave. This is the best time to observe their courtship and mating behavior. But at first, I'm the one being observed. Using a remarkable heat sensing organ, they're aware of my presence long before I'm aware of theirs. This facial pit, located behind the nostril, detects objects with a higher temperature than their surroundings. This adaptation helps them to locate and to strike at warm-blooded prey, and is why they're called pit vipers. Although it's risky, my curiosity overcomes my fear, and I continue further into the cave. I hope to see for myself the bizarre behavior displayed during the combat ritual that I've heard so much about. Western diamondbacks attain the largest den concentrations of all rattlesnakes sometimes a thousand to a cave.
This increases my chances of seeing a snake dance. Unfortunately, it also increases my chance of getting bitten. The shadowed walls seem to be crawling with snakes, but luckily the cave is fractured with holes, which allow sunlight to filter through. I came prepared with a walking stick. It's the only way for me to clear a path through this slithering maze. The snakes are irritable, to be expected after a long winter fast. I've also angered them by moving them out of the way. So if I want to see the natural behavior of undisturbed snakes, I'll have to search deeper into the cave. Because of its short temper, aggressiveness, and large size, the western diamondback is considered the most dangerous reptile in the U.S. The eastern diamondback is the largest, averaging six feet, and the Mojave rattlesnake has, by far, the most deadly venom of all pit vipers. But the western diamondback inflicts more serious bites than all other kinds of rattlesnakes combined. Although they can inject enough venom at one time to kill 45 humans, surprisingly few people die from a bite. Out of the thousands of people that are bitten each year, only about a dozen do not recover. Directly ahead of me, I see a male and female engaged in courtship behavior. The jerking motion of the male's head as he slithers over the female's body is a prelude to mating. His questioning tongue picks up scents from the female to determine her receptivity. Suddenly, a second male approaches from the rock above. The vibrating rattles and flicking tongue are part of a threatening pose intended to frighten away enemies. Finally, a chance to witness one of the strangest rituals found in nature. Thank you. 
the courting male rises up to meet the challenger, and the two rivals begin swaying rhythmically. This combat dance is an amazing example of the truth being even stranger than the tall stories about rattlesnakes. It was first believed that the snakes, twisting about and seemingly linked together, were mating. Now it's known that only males perform this symbolic dance. It has also been observed between males of different species and at different times of year, sometimes without a female nearby. What exactly stimulates the males to dance is not clear, but the goal seems obvious, to establish sexual dominance. With almost half of their bodies poised upright, the opponents rock back and forth until one senses an advantage and throws the other off balance. As their excitement builds, the momentum of the dance quickens. Lacking arms and legs, the snakes wrestle by literally throwing their weight around. Rattlesnakes communicate their annoyance by rattling. However, the term rattle is actually a misnomer, as there is no object rattling around inside like in a child's toy. The sound is produced by the loosely interlocking lobes rubbing together when vibrated. As captivated as I am by this odd performance, I almost forget to watch out for the other snakes. This one's much too close for comfort. It lets me know loud and clear that I'm the intruder. I'm saved by the rattle this time, but diamondbacks don't always give a warning before they strike. Rival males, about 10 feet away, don't seem to notice my presence as they continue their sparring. The wrestling match seems to be a test of coordination as well as of strength. This exhausting dance can go on for several hours, but snakes are very strong for their size. Pound for pound, they have more muscle tissue than any other animal. We humans could learn a valuable lesson from these ancient reptiles, whose contests are settled without any intent to kill their opponent. In any case, their death-dealing fangs are useless against each other, since rattlesnakes are immune to their own venom. This explains how they can bite and then swallow their poisoned prey. An intense fear of snakes lead some people to believe that rattlesnakes are cold-blooded killers who use their poison to the detriment of mankind. But venom and the means of injecting it evolved as a way of securing food. When striking a human in self-defense, rattlesnakes regulate the amount of poison they inject. Their first inclination is to conserve venom and they rarely inject a fatal dose. They often bite people without injecting any venom at all. Non-venomous constrictors risk being injured by a struggling bird or small mammal, but the powerful venom of a rattlesnake makes it unnecessary for the snake to hold on to and subdue its prey. To me, the most striking thing about rattlesnakes is not the potency of their venom, 
but the incredibly efficient method of injecting it. The hollow fangs function like hypodermic needles, and the deadly fluid is independently injected from one or both fangs. The fangs are hinged and fold back when the mouth is closed. They're shed every few months and replaced with new ones. I should probably leave soon, but I'm curious how much longer they can keep fighting. Rattlesnakes are indigenous only to the Americas. So when Europeans settled this land, their reaction to these unfamiliar and highly dangerous vipers was to wipe them out. Among American Indians, however, there was a surprising taboo against killing rattlesnakes. They were thought to be messengers from the spirit world and were treated with a combination of fear and reverence. The Cherokees believed that if you killed a rattler, another would appear. And if you killed that one, more would appear until you were finally driven crazy. Perhaps these myths originated from common nightmares Snakes are the most common animal in our dreams. Research shows that our irrational fears about snakes are most active when we're asleep. These sinister looking creatures do seem to stir the imagination. Yet the rattlesnake of song and story far surpasses its real life counterpart in degree of danger, size, and temperament. Tall tales echoed from around the campfire, are filled with reports of rattlesnakes that can outrun a man or leap into the air to bite a person on horseback. The truth is, almost any snake, poisonous or not, will avoid encounters with man whenever possible. Because of this, we don't meet up with snakes often enough to grow accustomed to their strangeness. Our impressions and fears are not formed by watching snakes go about their curious and fascinating way of life. Rather, they're formed by the countless ways our society portrays rattlesnakes as evil and fearsome demons. I continue to keep an eye on the snakes around me, or it could be the first and last time I observe this hypnotic dance.
This snake dance, performed by many species of old world snakes as well, has been a source of fascination for mankind since the time of Aristotle. It's believed that the symbol of the medical profession, or caduceus, was partly influenced by this hypnotic rite. With the final blow, the battle is won. Since snakes are deaf to airborne vibrations, they can't hear each other's threatening rattle. But to me, their sounds are especially ominous inside this cave. Rattlesnakes evolved during the Pleistocene era or the age of giant mammals, when horses, camels, and bison roamed the earth. The rattle evolved as an alarm bell, which would drive away creatures that might have trampled the snake. With sexual dominance established, the victor returns to the female to resume courtship. I've observed wildlife in many parts of the world, from tropical coral reefs to the Arctic tundra. But watching this ancient ritual of the snake world has been one of my most intriguing encounters. The loser lies motionless, uninjured, yet exhausted by the prolonged struggle. Rattlesnakes are ovoviviparous. That's right, that's really a word. Ovoviviparous. That means the flexible eggs are retained and actually hatch inside the mother's body. She gives birth to an average of eight to 10 live young. The first observations of this live birth led to the belief that they swallow their young for protection and that the young emerge from the parent's body only after the danger has passed. At the time, it was assumed that rattlesnakes also hatched from eggs, just like all other species. As the defeated male retreats from the battleground, I leave the cave for the safety of the daylight world. Now if I can just avoid stepping on any snakes on my way out. Many of the rattlesnakes from this cave are captured and killed each year for a rattlesnake roundup in Mangum, Oklahoma. Although such hunting is a part of our American tradition, 
These unique reptiles have an important place in nature. Hopefully, with common sense and proper management, future generations will also be able to witness the intriguing dance of the diamondbacks. Caves were once thought to be doorways to hell, dark places where evil spirits and imaginary creatures lurked in wait. Today we know better. Man has gradually realized that caves can be a source of fascination rather than fear. They remind us that nature has evolved a type of creature to fill every niche on earth and even under the earth. Unlike man, Animals are comfortable in the dark, and creatures that make their homes in caves are usually less harmful than the more familiar ones of our daylight world. With curiosity and patience, we can shed light on the most mysterious secrets of their lives. With careful observation, we can see something as beautiful and intriguing as a snake dance. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, Enjoy our wild America.